Now how long? You haven't had me here in three weeks. What's going on? I cut out my day to uh, make these appearances. I didn't get any notice last week. Uh, I don't like that. I like respect. You don't intimidate me. You don't intimidate an ex-mayor. Okay? Okay. Uh, is, is that enough? Have you finished? All right, look, I'm going to take the calls that are here, but then we're going to have, after I get... Then through the next one or two calls, we're going to take calls exclusively for our guests. And there's so many people here today. I can't. They're, they're starting. I demand to speak. I was. You have never had me on this program before. <laughs> you have never had me on this program before. There is no black representation of the black community. And I, as Reverend Sharpton, just have some respect. Just have some respect. Why didn't you bring Hilly with you? Uh, Hilly couldn't make it this morning. But I can defend the black community all by myself. Oh, for God's sake, <laughs> Reverend Sharpton is here. Oh, but we've represented the black community. We've had Mayor Dinkins. He's not, he is no representative. He is a lackey. He is a running dog of the white man. Oh, please, please, please. I beg your pardon. I am not a running dog of any man. I am unique to myself. I am my own man. Oh, this is unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, please, I can't take... But they... And, Jay, I want to thank you for having me, finally. <laughs> you've never... You, hey, you've never had me, and I can tell you, and I can tell all your listeners, that there'll be no deals made with hostages. And I said, and I will stick to that, the same way I stuck to no new taxes. Well, this is incredible. It's very crowded here today. And uh, Al Pacino, oh, you're, the Godfather is uh, opening up on December 25th. Mr. President, Mr. President, you and I are both part of the same hypocrisy. Why can't you say ours, Al? I never learned how. I'm too hip to say ours. At the actor's studio, we mumble. We don't say ours. It's fashionable. It's chic to have this lisp. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I, I have to keep control here, but the numbers from New Jersey, 201-489-WABC, from everywhere else, 212-563-WABC, if you have questions for any of these people. Right now, Bruce Anderson answers all your questions. Thank you, Jay. Good morning. It's clear, 33 now. We're going up to the upper 30s, perhaps 40 this afternoon. A tentative agreement's been reached in the strike by 2,100 private garbage hauling companies affecting 250,000 businesses. The agreement announced last night but details were not made public. The members of Teamsters Local 813 will vote on the offer today. Governor Florio is against a 25-cent hike in the fare for PATH trains, as proposed by the Port Authority, saying it'll simply add more cars to already crowded roadways, bridges, and tunnels. Now, on the proposal to boost tolls at the Hudson Crossings by $1 up to $4, the governor was noncommittal. 24-year-old Shaborn Esquilin is under arrest. He's charged with the murder of 55-year-old Irwin Ruckman on a subway car at the Rector Street Station in Lower Manhattan. Shooting occurred October 29th. You may recall Ruckman was a retired New York cop. He was shot with his own revolver when he tried to stop a man from robbing other passengers. Mayor Dinkins' anti-crime plan ran into a roadblock in Albany yesterday when, when Republican lawmakers wanted a breakdown as to where additional cops would be assigned, which precincts. The mayor is looking for approval from Albany for tax hikes to finance more policemen. Alan Karuba, a PR consultant in New Jersey and head of his own Boring Institute, his one-man effort to put things in perspective when it comes to celebrities, has released his annual Boring List based on massive media overexposure. On top of the list, J. Donald Trump. Number two, Madonna, followed by two live crew, Andrew Dice Clay, Roseanne Barr, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, New Kids on the Block, Warren Beatty, Sinead O'Connor, and George Steinbrenner. That's his list. Sports, Knicks beat Minnesota 87-76. Patrick Ewing led the way, had 31 points. Nets lost to Atlanta 106-97 in hockey. Devils lost to Pittsburgh 9-5, and the Islanders and Flyers tied at 2. And tomorrow, football, the Giants and Bills at Giants Stadium, 12-30. The Bills' Bruce Smith. Claims to be the best defensive player in the league, but Giants coach Bill Parcells says Lawrence Taylor holds that honor. He's a great, great player. Best defensive player over the last 10 years. And it's not close for second. 
Sunny, breezy, chilly. High around 40 today. Increasing clouds. Low 25 to 30 for tomorrow. Rain in the afternoon for that football game. Highs in the 40s and on Sunday, fair and chilly. 33, clear, going up to 40. I'm Bruce Anderson, WABC News. Back to Jay Diamond. All right, and that means it's time for Joe Nolan. Must be crowded in there. Oh, it's very busy. Very busy here. Yeah. You got uh, presidents, mayors, governors. Wait a minute. Somebody wants to talk to you. Yes? Joe, why don't you just take a hint and do the trick? <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. President. Anything for you. We've got delays. Don't park graphic control on WABC. It's 12 after 7. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. What are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? I have never been invited here before, and I, it's been too long. I demand to speak to the people of New York City to inform them why I protest, and then I go everywhere else. I'm not afraid of your callers. Well, uh, some of my callers don't like you, I can tell you that. They're calling up with epithets, but uh, let's go right to the phones. Jerry, you're on WABC. Good morning, Jay. How are you? All righty. I'd like to say that uh, WABC definitely has a gem. And we here in the metropolitan area are the benefits of that gem. You are an outstanding personality. Well, thank you very much. You're, you're, uh, far, too, you're, you're far too <clears throat> too effusive in your pro, uh, pro, no, uh, praise. No, not really. And what is the... Those plosives. i got to watch those P's. It's too close to the <laughs> microphone. What is impressive uh, for my... A viewpoint is your mood swings. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me, let me, let me clarify. No, that. you're right. You're right. Because it's reflective of society. If someone is damaging you, of course you're going to respond. We all do, and um, I, I, I think it's it's normal, it's natural, and it's healthy. But getting back to your uh, talent, outstanding. And they are mild. Yes, you remember that commercial? I do, I do indeed. Oh, my God. I'm Outstanding, and they're mild, and they cause cancer. Don't they ever? Oh, getting back to Cunningham 234. Oh, please. No, no, I went to I went to James Madison, not too far away. Yeah. But uh, aside, that aside, getting back to the uh, reason for my call. That was a real pit, a real hellhole. What can I tell you? A what real viper's I nest. I know that, but getting back, my, as soon as the, uh, uh, when it's 6 o'clock, that radio is on. I've laughed so hard, so many mornings. It's unbelievable. Well, thank you very much. Well, now I'm, I'm going to say goodbye to you only because I'm... I understand. I might want to, there might be some calls for all my guests here. Do you have I, any question for... Uh, oh, no, no. I, I have the governor here as well. Wait, he wants to say hello to you. <laughs> Jerry, I yes. see you're calling from Nassau County. That's correct. All right, Jerry, do you realize that you let me down on the last election? Do you realize that my combined opponents defeated me in Nassau and Suffolk County, do you realize that I lost the election, even against weak opposition in Nassau and Suffolk County? I don't know why people took that attitude. I don't know why they insisted on voting counter to the measures that I've taken to ensure a functioning of state government and, and the correct running of the governance of New York State for the next couple of years. Why is it that I was rejected by the voters on Long Island? Well, Governor, you're, you're second best. All the others that ran in the election are tied for first. All right. Well, uh, I want to thank you very much. Jay, that's I that's enough. The the governor is just devastated from that last exegesis. <laughs> Jake, I love the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 7.15 on WABC, and let's speak quickly with Dave. Hello, Dave. Uh, hi, Jay. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to make that call just for the break. Yeah. <laughs> I admire your stamina. Oh, which one was the, oh, the, the inventor? You mean uh, Enrico Fermi? Exactly. The call about Enrico Fermi, yeah. <laughs> what an exercise in ignorance. The guy didn't know. Oh, he's still probably half asleep. <laughs> well, I, I mean, there's, there's a difference like day and night between Enrico Fermi. It's like comparing oranges and apples because Einstein was a highly theoretical physicist. And uh, most of his... Uh, well, actually, his findings were predictions that were, you know, that were verified and confirmed after the fact, after he made them. Was Fermi, you know, in all due respect, was one of the greatest physicists also. There were, but there's no comparison. So I don't really think. Well, what was his, uh, what was his point? What was this? You tell me. <laughs> you heard him. So did you. You spoke with him. Yes, I spoke with him, but I had no idea of what he was talking about. But that's often well, the case that here. Well, makes, that makes two of you. 
three of us. <laughs> and the other woman, Ramona, whom whom I like, yeah. called me up with a, a rather that, insipid uh, dream. dream. Oh, my God. My God. <laughs> That's part of the arrangement here. Well, what can you do? I'm contracted to take all phone calls, Absolutely. not just those that make sense. Absolutely. Well, it didn't make sense at all, especially that call. I forget his name. What was his name? No, I can't remember. I don't think it's pertinent. No, really not. It's not embedded don't permanently in my brain pan. Um, well, uh, au contraire. Just make sure it, it, it doesn't get in, in there. Do I, uh, are you from the north of Budapest or the east of Budapest? No, neither. Where are you from? I am uh, of German extraction. German, it German must extraction. be close to Hungary, though. No, not at all. And why do I sense a Hungarian accent? Maybe I'm wrong. I, don't know. I know about maybe two or three, uh, two or three words in Hungarian, uh, Three words, two of which are curses. Oh, hold on. Somebody's... Wait, wait a minute. Hold on. Hey, how long is this going to go on? I, uh, I want to speak. I came here. I gave up uh, a delicious breakfast at uh, Le Cirque. Uh, I don't know who this guy is that you're talking to, but uh, I came here to talk, okay? Can I be uh, interviewed? I have things to say. I have things to say. Uh, Dave. Who are you? Why are you uh, ignoring me? I'm the former mayor. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. Well, you uh, see, I have these guests, uh, Dave. I can't keep them waiting. I, I, I have to interview well, them. Well, thanks a lot. I'll talk to you uh, later. I appreciate your call, Dave. Uh, what? You. Oh, by the way, are you a scientist? Uh, no, I'm an engineer. Well, you're, well, what's the difference? It's a big difference. Is there really? Oh, sure. Well, uh, I, I mean, I'm very flattered. To be isn't called. an engineer schooled in science? Don't uh, you take courses in physics and chemistry? Oh, absolutely, in, in modern physics, and uh, <laughs> there were nightmares. <laughs> there were worse than Ramona's dreams. Oh, sure, absolutely. Huh. Uh, you, you, yeah, sure, you take uh, modern uh, advanced physics, absolutely, but uh, I, I wouldn't claim to be a scientist. How long have you been in this country? Uh, since, well, I came twice to this country. Once, I, I'm, uh, I'm not as young as I sound. <laughs> I came in the 50s, was the Korean War, went to Israel, came back in the 60s. All right, thanks for calling. Thank you. Okay, bye, bye, -bye. now. All right, on WABC, it's uh, 718, and uh, I have a question uh, for Reverend Sharpton. Uh, you were kind enough to come by here today and take part in our discussion, our press conference, and you are actually willing to entertain calls from the listeners, should they want to speak with you. I said I would come up here. I said I would come up and I will explain my position. I have nothing to fear, and I will talk to anybody. All right. Uh, what is your, your major complaint? Uh, my complaint is that there are too many blacks in prison. The prisons are full of blacks, and I want more white people in prison. Well, the governor is here. Uh, Mr. Governor, do you have any solution to the problem that there's a disproportionate number of, of black citizens in prison, according to the Reverend Sharpton? Jay, I am offering up after the special session of the uh, state legislature that's about, that's convening now, the legislators are tired. They've been working hard. They're going to go home. They deserve to go home. I don't want to hold them here in Albany. We had the special session to fill the $1 billion budget gap. But right now, when the legislature reconvenes, what we're going to do is we are going... I am going to propose legislation to change the rules of evidence against white people in criminal trials. From now on, instead of having to be proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, what we're going to do is change it to, sim to a system similar to what we use in a civil case, in a lawsuit, where a preponderance of the evidence will be enough to convict a white person at a criminal trial. And in that fashion, we will, we will solve the problems of dis disproportionate representation of the black community in our state prisons. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that you're going to change the evidentiary rules in uh, criminal trials to make it more easy to convict uh, white people? Well, not only white people will make it more easy to convict Hispanics and Asians, too. Well, that's really a mouthful, Mr. Governor. Uh, perhaps some people will want to ask you about that. I don't know. It might be too controversial. But right now on WABC, it's 720. <laughs> Santa's helpers everywhere are smiling about Allwood Furniture's holiday home sale. 
but quality wood furniture you've always dreamed of is now available at prices you've never dreamed possible. <laughs> All Wood Furniture is the New York area's fastest growing family owned and operated furniture chain. That's your assurance that only the highest quality furniture is available at the best prices guaranteed. And now, you can save up to 60% off retail prices on every dining room set, every bedroom, every bookcase, every roll-top desk, every kitchen set, every rocking chair, and much, much more. Over 300 sets on display of oak, maple, butcher block, country, contemporary, or traditional. It's all on sale now. Hurry into one of Allwood Furniture's convenient locations today in Rico Park, Mineola, Farmingdale, and Patchogue. At Allwood Furniture, the Furniture will last forever, but this sale won't. It's just a matter of time. Your car is going to need a new battery, and that's when you should settle for only the best. That's why the Napa Legend was created, to be the better battery. It's better because it has greater starting power with up to 650 cold-cranking amps, better reserve power with up to 130 minutes just in case of an emergency, better durability with its exclusive tough anchor lock construction, better protection with a 75-month limited warranty that outdoes most of its competitors, better to install with an easy-to-grip handle available on some sizes. The Napa Legend is also better to recycle. It's the only car battery that carries the good housekeeping seal, and it's available at over 25,000 Napa outlets throughout the country. The people who know there are no unimportant parts for your car. Just ask for the Napa Legend, the better battery. Right now, through January 31st, you can get the Napa Legend for only $59.95 with exchange. At Ike's Auto Parts, 74 Pleasant Street, Monticello, New York. Call 914-794-7722. Do you want to achieve real wealth? Well, there is a way to do it. The way to do it is to get the rights and licenses to new technologies before they become big. And once they're big, then sell them for a big profit when everybody else wants them. Remember, as the deal wears on, the deal wears out. Captain Stewart's father said that. Like cellular telephones, for example. Let me tell you about Charlotte Olive of Baton Rouge. She was given three, three free filings by her boss. One was accepted, just one. And she sold it later for $30 million, ladies and gentlemen. The Wall Street Journal reported that Wayne Shell was paid $52.5 million for his 40% share of a cellular filing. $52.5 million for a 40% share of a cellular filing. The next wave in technology is going to be inexpensive over-the-air cable TV, which is called microwave cable, microwave cable. This is already successful on the West Coast, and now the FCC, FCC is granting licenses for the East, and that means us. Those who get them will reap incredible rewards. Microwave cable systems are actually valued at 67% more per subscriber than cellular systems. Microtech Tech Inc. is filing for these licenses right now as I speak to you. If, if you are a serious investor with a minimum of $6,000 to invest and you want in on the next wave, call Microtech now at 718-225-2744. There's a very limited number of microwave cable partnerships left, so call Microtech now, 718-225-2744. That's 718-225. 225-2744. Before I uh, give you the weather report, which you know I loathe doing because it's always hot, even though it's now December 13th, I'll give you the phone numbers. From New Jersey, if you wish to call, it's 201-489-WABC. Elsewhere, please respond as follows, 212-563-WABC, if you wish to converse with me or my gentleman callers here this morning on WABC. Right now... It's my responsibility to inform you that it's 33 degrees clear, sunny, but they say cold. I say conventionally chilly for this time of year with diminishing winds. High only in the mid to upper 30s. I guarantee 41 degrees today. Get me if I'm wrong. Tonight, fair and cold. They say cold. Low 25 to 30. Be about 32, I figure. Saturday, increasingly cloudy. Rain developing in the afternoon, that means those warm southerly winds will be wafting up. High 45, that means 50. Chance of rain 80% afternoon on Saturday. Right now it's 33, going up to about 40 on WABC. <laughs> As I greet John. John, I have a large assemblage of people here. Yes, Governor, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Oh, the Governor. Why doesn't anybody want to speak to me? Well, 
I gave up a tremendous breakfast at uh, Le Cirque. I could have been sitting with M. Donald Grant now, and uh, sometimes Dina Merrill comes in. You know, I have a crush on Dina Merrill. Would you believe that? Do you remember when I was going with Bess Meyerson, or I... You weren't going with her. You were never going with her. You were you made out that you were going with her. I uh, I never made out with uh, Bess Meyerson. I never made out with anybody, not even Herb Brickman. Herb Brickman wanted to make out with me, but uh, I told you I was straight. I told you I'm straight. Yeah, you're straight. Straight as a plumb line. Now, get out of here. Uh, hey, don't speak disrespectfully to me, okay? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, John. Everything is getting thrown off. Well, right, These people are bickering. Speaking, speaking of straight, I wanted to find out what's happening to the English language in this country. I mean, it seems that we've got a, a language which is getting totally inundated by misnomers. We call uh, vagrants and bums and crack addicts and people that are, you know, a, a dangerous threat to the society, homeless, quote unquote. We call people that are dying of AIDS and that have uh, that have created one of the greatest uh, one of the greatest purges on, on on mankind in the last couple hundred years as gay when there isn't any anything very gay about, uh, you know, dying of a horrible disease. Now the teenage uh, group of the homosexual community is getting it, but God forbid that they ever admit to, to any culpability in this. Uh, we, we don't call a spade a spade anymore. Everything is totally twisted and everything is, is a lie. Uh, what, what are we going to do about that, Governor Cuomo? Well, right now, I've, uh, I'm reviewing the decision of my uh, state human rights commissioner, uh, Miss Rosa, and uh, she has made a decision which will be out soon. And I, I know some people will be against this decision. But I have it here in front of me, and I brought my notes with me today because I wanted to be prepared to speak to you intelligently on what's happening. We have a case today where a pharmacist, uh, a pharmacist who is HIV positive, is uh, going to be reinstated at a hospital in White Plains. Now, the uh, Margarita Rosa is the state human rights commissioner. Are you still there? Yes, I'm still I hear here. doors opening. Yes, I hear it. All right. Uh, and this gentleman was given a job as a hospital pharmacist, and then they found out that he's HIV positive. They wanted to let him go in White Plains. Uh, but Margarita Rosa, my human rights commissioner, uh, overruled uh, the hospital and uh, the rule that the hospital's argument ignores the overwhelming evidence that uh, his unrestricted employment posed a negligible risk of infection to patients. <laughs> Uh, so, you see, there's nothing wrong with having AIDS and working in a hospital as a pharmacist. Yeah. My own appointee says so. Yes. Well, good luck to the rest of us, because uh, we're going downhill in a handbasket faster than anything. But uh, I guess that's just the way life is in these United States, and particularly in New York, your wonderful state that you've done such a great job in, uh, in running for the past years. Thank you very much. I think the, the, the mayor, by the way, was... It was uh, really insulted by your your references to the criminal community as a as an underclass oh, because he's done so much to help us well he's the toughest mayor on crime aren't you thank you very much <laughs> all right thank you okay thank you at 731 on wabc we will be back shortly oh i'm back 738 on wabc i'll speak to joe hello joe good morning good morning jay yeah hi how are you uh i'm over here trying to survive yeah uh, where Start now. Well, that's easier to survive there than here, so you're in good shape. <laughs> okay, uh, addressing your panel, do you have, uh, among your guests, do you have the chancellor of the school of New York? No, he's not here, but I have the mayor, and I have Reverend Sharpton, and President Reagan, and President Bush, and Al Pacino, and, uh, oh, who else? Who the who in blazes knows? That's a, and the governor's here, too, so you can take your shot. Okay, among your guests, I think you should have invited the chancellor, because uh, I'm pretty sure he's part of the gang. Uh, yeah, but he's kind of characterless. He's kind of a uh, gray suit. I I heard that they offer they're offering him a new job now. What is that? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what kind of job is that. They they trying to bring him down to Washington. I think uh, he's done enough damage here in New York. Now uh, they're really trying to you know uh, get him involved in, uh, in deeper politics. Anyway, my uh... well, you're right. You know what he's dreamed up today. What you was know that? what he's dreamed up today. He uh, is no longer going to require teachers to submit their daily lessons pl lesson plans to their principals. The teachers will be less thoroughly supervised than in the past. Now, as you might expect, the United Federation of Teachers is four square behind the Chancellor's initiative. But I will tell you that uh, for a hundred years or so prior to today, 
the conventional way of conducting classroom business was for a teacher to submit his or her lesson plan to their principal for review. Now, according to the Chancellor's initiative described today in this morning's New York Times, teachers will be more thoroughly independent of their principals than in prior years, and teachers will no longer have to be under the immediate supervision of their principals. You know why he's doing that, don't you? Uh, not exactly. Because they have fewer and fewer qualified teachers, and they're afraid... They, they're afraid to submit those lessons plans to the, to the principals because half the teachers can't read or write. <laughs> well, anyway, I'd like to, uh, you know, since uh, the chancellor is not there, I'd like to address uh, Mayor Dinkins and, uh, and uh, Deputy Mayor Bill Lynch. All right. Seems like they forgot, uh, you know, who... Mayor Dinkins? Them. Mayor Dinkins? Mayor Dinkins. Uh, I cannot provide Bill Lynch. He's, he's trying to bail his son out today. Uh, okay, uh, then it goes to, uh, Robert Sharpton, if he's, uh, if he's still, if he's not in jail or if he's still out. I'm still here. I don't like your casting aspersions against me. If you have a question, I answer your question, but don't try to insult me for no reason. Okay, uh, and, uh, maybe the, the governor would like to ask... I have not insulted you. Why are you insulting me? Uh, okay, uh... Wait, Reverend Sharpton, when you speak, my throat hurts. Go ahead. Uh, instead of, uh, giving out condom in the school, in, uh, in uh, public schools, uh, why don't they just line them up? And, uh, you know that, that North plan that, uh, the scientists came up with today to, uh, five years prevention and, and, and having, uh, you know, the, for the kids not to get pregnant, for the little girls not to get pregnant, why don't they just line up all the kids, uh, since they have the power, they have all the big lawyers and everything, why don't they just line them up and put, the uh, the five plastic little things in their arms, and uh, they won't have to worry about anything else. That'll be an easier way to annihilate a uh, certain population. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. Listen. Uh, on WABC at 741. Uh, I'm going to uh, introduce Joe. Is that okay? I didn't give you permission. <sighs> Joe, uh, He doesn't need permission. He's Joe, Ed Koch. Do, do you find uh, this... Uh, thank you, Joe. You're you know, welcome. It's, uh, at least you are aware of the respect that I command. Oh, you respect a great... You should have a great deal of respect. You don't intimidate... You're a mayor of the city of New York for 12 years. You intimidate an ex-mayor. No. Joe, uh, I understand you're going to be at the ABC party. That's yes. right. I think I'm going to come, too. That'd be great. Okay. That'd be great to see you. I'm amazed, though, that the... That the Joe, have you noticed how the highways have deteriorated uh, since I've been mayor? No. They didn't. In fact, you tried to get them to be better. I didn't... That's what I meant, Joe. They've deteriorated since oh, I left. Since. Since oh, since. Oh, I, I left. That isn't what you said. Since you uh, were Joe, mayor. Joe, do the traffic. Do me a favor. See, you said... That isn't what you said. Uh, Joe, uh, yes, don't correct my uh, thinking process. <laughs> don't correct the way I'm the guest here. Just do the traffic. Yes, sir. We've got some delays. Jay Townsend. 77 746 now, and uh, on WABC, Joe is stopping by. Hello, Joe. Hello, uh, Jay. I, I want to say I enjoy your show very much. Thank you, Joe. But uh, some of your guests uh, give me a problem. I'd like to ask the president uh, a couple of questions if I might. Well, you know, there are two presidents here, so why don't you specify <laughs> which one? The president now. The be President Bush. You mean the current president? The current president, yes. Uh, my question... Let, uh, me, let me slide in here and speak to this guy, because... I, hey, I don't want to put you off, fella. Go okay. ahead. The uh, present uh, deal that I understand is about to take place between uh, Russia and the U.S. involving grain and loan, etc. You're talking about an arrangement of loan credits to the, that are going to go through not the only the United States, but provided by Western Europe and through the World Bank. Well, this is something that's reflecting a meeting we had with the seven economic leaders in June. I see. Well, I, I did this is collective action, very similar to the collective action we're taking in the Gulf, and we intend to stick it through. The Soviets have shown some reforms. They haven't shown as much as I've wanted them to show, but they've shown enough so that at this point we can go ahead and, and provide them with the help they need well, so that we that, can all work together. If I might interrupt, uh, President, I think they're sticking it to us, and what I'd like to see is a little uh, grain for oil deal here. Maybe we can get some of our prices down on our, on our oil. What do you think about that? Well, you're talking about Russian oil. But the Russians don't have that, that much reserves. 52% of the world's reserves are, are in countries right now dominated by, by Saddam Hussein. 
Well, I don't right know. there in Iraq and Kuwait. And we're going to get him out, and we're going to do it. I'm resolved to do that. There, listen, and listen carefully. There will be no deal. There will be no deal. There will be no deal. Okay, I don't see why there has to be a... Now that our hostages are out, to change the subject, now that our hostages are, have been released, why, why can't we negotiate a little... Uh, take a little more time to negotiate? Uh, can, I, can I get a word in here, Edgewise? Who's this? This is the governor. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you a question. I beg your pardon. Where were you raised? Don't you know enough not to interrupt somebody? I'm not interrupting you. I'm merely adding to what you say. I'm expanding. I'm expatiating. I'm... I would like to talk to I, the governor about I, the war ex... on drugs and, and the president. Here's the subject you, to both hey, of you. Hey, fella, you say you're expatiating. <laughs> what kind of a dictionary have you got there? I don't even know that word. I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm merely trying to say this. I don't want to see American troops committed to a, a war for oil. I would much rather see American troops committed to wars of national liberation. J.J., can you take the yeah, phone? What? What's that? I, it's getting, I'm getting nervous. I'm in the middle of this. Listen, uh, speaking about war, why can't we have this type of effort on the war on drugs that we have now on, uh, on this effort that's going on in Iraq? Can the president answer that? I mean, I don't, I don't know of any Americans that have died uh, and I, by Iraqis, but there certainly are thousands that are dying from drugs. What, what, what's his answer on that? Americans are in, in a position to be killed by Iraqis imminently, and I'm going to give those Americans the, the, the weapons they need to defend themselves and to defend our way of life and our values. Well, they're only there now because you sent them over there. In great numbers. Well, wait a minute now. I have to. Uh, I have to step in and defend the president. What is your? Uh, why do you find fault with the president sending the troops over? Oh, there, I don't. I, well, first of all, I believe he should. Well, I'm not, a, of course, a, uh, uh, a strategist, but I, I believe an air war would be m much more uh, effective than, than committing hundreds of thousands of men. Uh huh. Yeah. To you know, this effort, but uh, we could have committed, you know, hundreds of thousands of our. Uh, of our uh, soldiers to fight the war on, uh, on drugs in our country. I see. All right. Well, uh, I'm sure the president will be gratefully awaiting your recommendations. Right can now, I, I've got to go. Can I've I got to go. No, it's late. It's late. Okay. It's late. There are others in line. Okay, thank you. 750 on WABC, 33 to 31 degrees now, going up to about 40 today. Cold, calm, just a normal, typical day in the winter, except that it won't be here for long. It'll be... Warmer tomorrow with rain, about 50 degrees tomorrow, and rain afternoon. Anyway, 31 going up to about 40 in Central Park. Right now on WABC, it's 751.